This is my review on the 1989 flick, Batman. That's it, just Batman. Um, I have in the past just gone back and forth between these movies. Uh, liking and hating, loving and blah, blah, blah. I, like, I've gone back and forth, and uh, the thing is, all of the positive and negative things I've said in the movie still stands about this movie. But, uh, like, the only reason why you like the Batman movies is because, you know, he's, uh, is really the Danny Elfman score. And, yeah, he does have a shade cut because it looks like it's roughly put together and it's all coming apart. If it's in decent light, if it looks terrible. But if it's shitty light, like it is most of the time, it looks decent and cool. Yeah, Jack Nicholson is the only good thing about this movie. Plus, is he actually got a good costume design that actually was well made together and well put together in the final product of the film. That's probably why he actually always has decent lighting, so you can see his costumes so he can show it. While well, Michael Keaton's has the opposite outcome. I both love and hate this movie because I have mixed feelings is why I have to give this a 5 out of 10. Because everything why I hate about it is also everything I like about this movie at the same time. It's kind of like a uh kind of like Batman and Robin from 1997 how I feel about that movie. Or every Schumacher Batman movie and every Burden Batman movie is how I feel about that those movies. So Well the plot about Batman is like he's he has thing about my problem but I will say what's bad about the all those movies actually compared to the first one is that in the first one, Batman has no uh, place in the plot of the movie. He's just here to sell tickets and get money off of you. And it worked. Can't say it didn't work. So he's more, he's less like a kind of more of a marketing strategy. Probably how he's going to be used as the Flash in the Flash movie. With Ezra Miller as the Flash. Playing two versions of his character. Ezra Miller is playing two different versions of himself. And Mel King's playing his old Batman character. So. Version. Or at least a variant version of his Batman. Um, so, you know how Michael King doesn't really, you're not really sure what his, what I'm trying to say is the, Michael King's character is really just everything that's in the promotional material of the movie, in the trailers. That's probably what they're going to do with the ba Batman and his Batman return to the big screen in the, this year in 2023. Decades later after the first one came out in 1989. And he last played Batman in 1992, Batman Returns, so... And that had a similar outcome, although he did actually have some reason to be... Uh, business being in the plot of the film and reasoning... The first one, I feel like he's just a tool and gives something to the Joker to fight and try to kill. And can't kill. So he's basically the... Um... The object that's in Joker's way. 
in the movie. Basically, it seems, uh... I mean, I do have Joker and we see all the characters like Vicky Vale, but, uh, that's pretty much it. And I found Knox kind of an annoying piece of shit. And Gordon needs to go on a fat, low-fat diet in this movie, and... And lay off the pies, so this is why I kept on thinking to myself while watching this movie. So, yeah. I really love the ending, but most of the reason why I love the ending, I was hoping that this problem was going to get fixed in the sequel and so on. Majorly, but it didn't. And a reason why people, com I guess, uh, why this one didn't do as the sequel didn't do as well as the first one because Batman wasn't in it that much, but he's actually in more and has more reason to be in the sequel. I think the reason why people didn't like Batman Returns financially as much as the first one is because, you know, Burning used the same bag of tricks and tricked the audience and began thinking that's into half a time of thinking that it's a Batman movie where really this is uh, Batman's Rhodes Gallery the movie. And yeah, you have him in the main title and also you have him in the title uh, like he's a it just seems like a bit of a cock tease is what I'm trying to say. Burns run and um that's why I give a f 5 out of 10 the first one. Now let's talk about Batman Returns. Who, which, fuck, I'm also, I'm, I can, uh, say, uh, I do like Michelle's Pfeiffer. And costume, uh, mostly just because she looks hot in it. I mean, it's kind of kicking, isn't it? In a sexy way, right? That's why everyone loves Catwoman now in since the Burner movie came, made her famous, and we just like her just because she's a fine ass to look at. Isn't that right, ladies and gentlemen? And the one who don't look at her like that, we probably just want to be like that much hotness and have that and get as much attention and sex as much often that Catwoman could get when she was played by Michelle Pfeiffer. Catwoman has involved in live action, gone better since this, but, uh, however, I feel like because he didn't make her as tight of a costume and as Leathery as the cause and as sexually whoa hot looking a costume is probably why you know she is not as liked since Michelle Pfeiffer's days says Catwoman it's because you know the the give her more dialogue now Catwoman and they gave and they give her more dialogue to give more depth and character, but that's not why people love Catwoman. They just like it because they just like they need a bitch to something show up and shut up and show them the goods. <sighs> At least from Catwoman. That's why Michelle Pfeiffer is the best Catwoman. I don't agree. But everyone else seems to think so. They don't want to say that. That's why. And, and, and they don't want to say that. It just makes them horny. It gives them something to jerk off to. But that's why she's the best cow. Because she's the most hottest looking cat woman. And to them, that's all cow needs to be. 
You know, these are coming from someone who never read a Batman comic. See, I, what about the, you know, instead of having the Catwoman that's witty and funny and kind of sneaky and sometimes hero or, or, or villain and will bounce back and forth and be neither because you're never sure which one she's going to be and she's going to backstab you or help you out. Instead of then dang get Catwoman from the comics, <laughs> you know, the one, the one I like, we get the skank whore. Which is a fine character, but a, a skank whore is a skank whore. A floozy is a floozy. If it looks like a floozy and acts like a floozy and walks like a floozy, I say it's a floozy. Same goes for a duck. If it looks like a duck, acts like a duck, it's a duck. <laughs> so, uh... And Penguin is... Look, I'm going to be ongoing with level issue. Why didn't they just bring Jack and the Ghost Sin back in this movie? Because what they did was basically made Jack Penguin the Joker. Personality-wise and, you know, design-wise, if Joker was a diabetic and was had a major ball spot and played by Danny DeVito. That's kind of what he, Penguin strikes me as to me, design-wise, and you know, also if, you know, hypothetically, if Joker was ever a diabetic and could drop dead at any moment, or if he was... Had a big ball spot on the top of his head. That had hair of rest for you. Everywhere else. But that's what the... Look, I'm going to be honest with you. You know I like the Penguin sign. It's no, it's nothing inspiring or original. The character in the Penguin... Burns Penguin. It's a... I mean... <laughs> Honestly, I like Penguin from the comics more than this Penguin. Because I feel like a god for... I mean... Because probably because he's not this, uh, he doesn't feel like a same character that Joker was in the first one. What I'm trying to say is the Penguin's not supposed to be a Joker knockoff or a copycat, but you know, Burton just said he didn't like the Penguin from the comics. He felt him boring and uninteresting, so he'll just. Rather than you, rather than bring Jack Nicholson back as the Joker, let's get have him re, 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 replaced by a different actor, but bring the Joker back, or the second way they had to do. He decides to reinvent the character and makes Lee make him the Joker. That becomes mere and exposed as a fraud by Batman on a recording. The Batman, for a brief moment, decides to rewind the coin in a DJ fashion. With the help of Alfred. And... I'm going left with you. I didn't like Alfred until Batman and Robin. Didn't find him interesting, or... A believable by Alfred until the last one. Uh or gay a fuck about him. Yeah, up until the last one, Baron Robin, which is, takes place in the same universe timeline. I didn't give a fuck about Alfred at all. Mm, or found it interesting on engagement from Sorfest. So, yeah, that's why Batman Returns because the fire out to none of those time for the last one, Batman and Robin, to Batman and Robin from 1997. That, once again, you got a different person playing Batman from, went from Mike Keenan to Val Kimmer, which I think did the best job out of the three in this franchise that played, act of uh, the actors that played him. Now we got George Clooney in this. Well, um, by then, when this movie came, all the cracks of the Batman franchise 
that's had it since day one was trying to show. Let's put it this way. Well, Batman has more screen time than he ever has in the burning f since the since the last one, Batman Forever. He's given less things to do to make him valuable to the plot. Compared to Batman Forever with Val Kilmer. And, um, and they decided to go back to the old ways where instead of having Batman and Val back and having him, you know, have married to the plot, Batman himself and feel like he's important. They decide to go the opposite route in the background, backwards approach, where he has no value to prod, despite, and so he basically has as much value to the plot as he did with, well, Burton's first attempt of Batman. So why was this one, uh, shows the problem more? Well, it's probably because Batman has more, well, he does have more screen time than, uh, Keenan did in either Batman films, Returns or Batman. However, you know, they made him the main focus, but gave him nothing to do to make him valuable or meaningful to the plot. Sort of like Byrne did with the first two Batman films that he made. And so this time it's Schumacher. So, that's probably why the only reason why this couldn't get, work the, get away was the, the, this time. There's different director, the different person working on the film, Burns a producer on this, executive producer like he was with Forever. Um, well, producer, you know. Yeah, um, so... I you know, like the Kino ones. There's like so much going on. It's overly convoluted. No, no, no narrative to the story structure. No rhyme or reasons. This, but it does have a like, kick-ass feeling. Uh, villains being villains, and villains the main character instead of Batman, which was the reverse outcome for Batman Forever, and that's why the Batman and Robin gets a. Five out of ten. And this is my review on Batman Forever. And now I'm talking about it and all the things I said uh, about these past movies is the complete opposite for Batman Forever. Uh um Batman does have a character direct, but the reason why this gets a fire attempt because he decides to shoot itself in the foot. That story, for the sake of money making purpose, that the studio made changes to the script and shoots different for the final product, and which is Schumacher's vision got very corrupted by the studios. So, um, the reason I think it obsessed me because. Yeah, I get what they were doing. They're trying to do this, like, thing Batman's trying to change his ways and not kill anymore. But it doesn't hammer those mesh ideas of the story structure home enough. Like, the Schumacher things that he was going to have in the movie that was close to the vision did. And because of that, it's, it seems a little more confusing why Two-Face got killed off and Batman wasn't bothered by it at all. It seems like very confused uh, for the final product of a vision. So that's why I give this uh, 5 out of 10, even though it's the best out of the four franchise. That's one continuing franchise that Burns started all in Schumacher and did it all. So that's why Ben Forever you knows my favorite out of the four. It still gets a 5 out of 10, like the, all the other th past three I mentioned in this video gets a 5 out of 10. And, um... Hopefully the Schumacher cut will come out soon. Like, 
it's confirmed with Schumacher Cud. Will it just confirm that it's like going to happen coming out with Schumacher Cud? Uh, basically, everything that's more true to his vision to actually have a coherent narrative and actually made sense. And just didn't do anything rhyme reason. The only reason why Batman kills in this movie is the same reason why he did it for Batman Forever for mocking reasons. To make money off of people. There's a reason why Schumacher had to kill Two's face off with Batman free will doing it. Because, you know, and the studio really kind of pushed him into changing the ending. Uh, and so the reason he tried to, uh, he found out, he, it turns out he did try to fight for the, not to do that. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's like studios can think of me as very sneaky and wonder to be able so, that's the reason why um, Batman kills in the forever. Batman forever. And the reason why he get killed in the first two months is because Burning didn't know any better. Probably. Just like he didn't know any better when he did. The first two Batman films Burman did, but they still came out halfway decent. Yeah, so did the other ones too after that. No, five half tens. Not bad, just not great. Sort of like Josh Whedon's take on Justice League. It's how it feels like in a nutshell. The each film feels like a confused vision of Mishmax ideas. Whoever's Doing this doesn't know what they're doing or what to do. This bring it just feels like uh like we just like how uh it just feels like you're just putting stuff in for the sake of stuff because it looks cool and not because you want to develop these characters or like because you want the honest give a shit about guys, but it's because this is a reason a excuse for you reason to pack as much cool shit in as possible. This is what this feels, these franchises feel like in a nutshell. All four. So, yeah. My pain still stands of Christian Bale being the worst Batman. And Keaton being the second worst. And f fuck. It. Clooney's the third worst Batman still. Yeah. It's a shame we haven't got a single damn good adaptation of of a franch life a franchise of Batman that is actually in long run a ten out of ten franchise instead of five out of ten franchise. I don't like hmm. I mean unfortunately. Bye. And subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up.